Hello, welcome to Fred Film Radio at the London Film Festival, the BFI London Film Festival. It's exciting, there's so much going on here in London town. We're here with one of the, uh, well, director now, taking part in the London Film Festival. You know, the actress extraordinaire, uh, back in her homeland from the theatre, of course. Star of many big films, Valkyrie, we were just talking about with Tom Cruise, of course. You're on the stage with Jude Law in a play here in London quite recently. But now, stepping behind the camera. Helena Rain is joining us here to talk about her movie Instinct, which I saw this morning. In the morning? That's bold. I know. I, know. I got through it. It was okay. Um, but what a marvellous film. I mean, powerful, shocking, and I suppose the place to start is why this story, or perhaps explain the story for people listening. Yeah, well, very simply said, it's about, it, it, it's based on true events, and it's about a therapist, female therapist, a very, very uh, uh, well-known therapist, and she falls in love or has an affair with a serial rapist that she's treating in prison. Yeah, and it's as, you know, shocking as out there, as unique and powerful, I suppose, as that explanation would make people believe when they hear it. You got some guts, you know, taking this story to the screen, and I suppose that was the idea, wasn't it, about getting it made? Yeah, well, I saw it on a news program. They had a news program in, uh, in Holland where they sort of, talked about this as a phenomenon so not just this story but this happening a lot in prisons and I think that is not a, a very like I didn't surprise me in that way because we all heard stories about like the guards who will help the criminal escape you know the criminal will make the guards fall in love with them and stuff like that but this is of course uh, not only a, a guard this is a highly trained professional who, sh who should be able to see every manipulation and see through him in every way and then how is it possible, that was my question, that somebody highly trained as that person, so intellectual, so, so smart, can still do something that is so destructive for herself? You took this film to, you were at Locarno, weren't you? You won the prize at Locarno, congratulations. Uh, you were at Toronto with this movie, so you're starting to see the reactions, which is always as a filmmaker and your first debut film. It must be quite enjoyable slash quite frightening to see how people receive it. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you put it very well. It's both. I mean, for me, I, I, we made this film for, for a very small amount of money. We, we shot it in 23 days, so we had like a military preparation, but we never expected it to grow like this. And also we are now the, the Dutch uh, Oscar entry for Best Foreign Language Film, so it's like it's growing bigger and bigger. And I think I never expected it to be received like this, and I think it's just a hunger for this kind of story because, of course, it is about sexuality and power, and these are themes, of course, that right now are very, you know, on everybody's agenda and everybody's talking about it. And so I think there's a, a great need for, for maybe another side to it or just the gray area that we are exploring because in the end, you don't really know. They are both damaged. Yeah, the, the Caris van Hout, who plays the, the lead beautiful actress, my best friend. <laughs> I'm a little biased. But, and the other part is played by Marvin Kanzari, who is also like an international star now. He plays Jafar in Aladdin and stuff like that. And so it's also a movie just about two giant actors. You know, like in one room, I really was inspired by the movie Hunger, in which you have this scene between uh, the priest and uh, the prisoner and they are sitting there for half an hour. It's like almost one take, you know, it's like theater to me. So the whole movie is more of an abstract story about uh, sexuality, boundaries, power, control, addiction, not so much like a social prison drama or anything. I mean, it goes places that, you know, other ones perhaps wouldn't. I mean, I suppose that's the thing. It goes that next stage. It's that idea, isn't it, that sexuality is a, very, is a really hard thing to define in terms of what's right, what's wrong, and perhaps there shouldn't be all these kind of terms associated with it. Like, she's got a lot of thoughts going on in this. I don't want to give away the story, but you know, it's, it's not as black and white, perhaps, as people would think. Yeah, and of course, it would be a very uh, safe world if we could say the, the bad guys are over there and the good guys are over there. But unfortunately, this is not how society and not how humans are. And so we try to, with our movie, we try to, to look into that area, which is of course frightening because that means that we all are beasts and we all are, are little elephants you know so um we we didn't want to make a Walt Disney film in which good and evil are very clear we wanted to really look at ourselves in an honest way and also 
you know, who are we as women? I think, uh, in my opinion, we just got the right to vote. You know what I mean? Like, so there's not a lot known about our sexuality, about our bodies, about anything. And so this movie for me is like a cry for help almost. Like, who am I? I don't know who I am. I'm struggling with this little princess in me that wants to be protected and dominated. And then I'm this very dominant career woman. And what does that mean? I'm a monster of Frankenstein. Is that a feminist? I don't know. So these are my questions that I just put out there and I hope Somebody can answer them, though. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my job to answer that. I think, especially as a man. <laughs> you can answer these questions a lot better than I can. Um, can we talk about Chris? Because obviously you two very good friends worked together and became friends, I suppose, when you worked yeah. together before. She, of course, in Game of Thrones, people know from that. Um, you formed a production company, haven't you? Which is, this is the first fruits of your labour, so to speak, with uh, Man Up, it's called. <laughs> what was the idea with that? I suppose the title is kind of quite suggestive of what it's about. Yeah, so the title Man Up is just a joke as well, but also um, I think it came from the fact that we were both um, so lucky to be very accomplished actresses very very fast in our lives. And so um, we started to get a little bit bored because we, we worked with so many great directors and then slowly you start to develop this really this urge to do something yourself and not only be the one who is like the paint that somebody else is, you know, in somebody else's painting. And so we started to think... Um, uh, think up of, 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 of a TV show that we wanted to do. It's called Red Light. We're shooting it right now and it's about prostitution, it's about female trade. It, it of course takes place in the Red Light District in Amsterdam. And so we're shooting that right now with our company. But in, we, we thought that it took too long to get finance. It took us six years because it's a huge project. It's 10 episodes. And so then after a couple of years, I was like, I want to do something now, you know. And then I, I had this idea. And of course, these themes are the same. Eh? The Red Light District also deals with sexuality and power. But for a much wider audience, like it's it's going to be on primetime TV. So it's different. And this movie is just instinct is much more raw. It's much more yeah maybe for you need to you know it's, it's a movie that looks further than than I didn't in my mind when I was writing it I didn't think that anybody would see it you know? <laughs> here like, we are <laughs> I know and so now it's to me a little bit confusing because I never made it with the idea that so many people would look at my darkest fantasies and my darkest fears and my darkest thoughts so it's also a little bit scary like you said in the beginning of our conversation but on the other end of course it's is the best because I think I did make it to make people feel less lonely, mm. like an alien. Like I feel like an alien all the time. Like, and I feel that some people who see my movie, especially women, they get really emotional because for them there's a relief to it. I'm not alone. I can talk about these feelings. I shouldn't be ashamed of these feelings, although I see myself as a feminist. Yeah. I was gonna say that, that conversation about, and we've had obviously the Me Too movement that came along with a very specific few very, in the headlines that we don't need to obviously go into now but we seem to be at a time when you know we're trying to work out what the logical steps are that need, you know yes. the things that need to be done without being too far the other way so yeah. to speak i know speaking to rachel vice when you you know many journalists ask her what it's like to be a woman she's like can we not talk about, you know can you can we, there's not a better way it's like i'm some endangered elephant and that's what she says which is which is a hilarious I way of putting that. it she's so funny but i guess like you're saying with your production company what you want to do is be able to tell the stories from your point of view yes. and get them financed and get them made. Yes, exactly. And also, um, I think even us, we are still white women. So I think we should also step aside. You know, it's also our dream to create stuff that other females or like other women bring stuff to us that we can then realize for them or you know i think it's just i mean this is of course a very big dream and i want to be humble about it but yeah my ultimate goal would be in 10 years that there would be stories made by minorities also um you know the, the whole community of minorities everyone should step in and and if you have a good idea just just write us an email and i think you know because even i think i'm very p privileged as a white woman so i think it's just these are so exciting times i mean it's it's so important that this movement continues and that we 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 need to, to look at the grey areas and we need to have the guts to do it. Quick question before you let it go because you're very busy here in London. Directing, style-wise, I mean, how weird did it feel to be behind that camera? Well, of course, I was very, you know, insecure about it up front. I was like, I couldn't sleep very well and, and, and in the months before, the years before even. But because Ivo van Hoof, who's my director, who I did the play with Jude Law, um, also with Obsession, uh, he, I, I learned from him, I worked with him for 20 years, uh, that he always prepares like a soldier. Like, 
totally prepares. And then in the rehearsal room, he, he lets go completely. And then you're free. So that is what I tried to do. I really prepared myself like a military person. And then when we were on set, I, I could listen to the actors. I could listen to the best idea, whoever had the best idea. And I was so secure of every question anybody had, I could answer. And if I didn't have the answer, I would just say, well, I don't know, what do you think? Or I felt, for me, it felt, directing felt like coming home. And I don't have children. And I felt so like all my motherly feelings could flow. You know, I, I just taking care of the team, taking care of everybody, putting everybody in their strength. I thought it was the most magical experience of my life. And I cannot wait. I hope I can do it again. Well, I love the style, the beautiful new close-ups, which is, I guess is the idea yeah. with a story like this, is yes. to get that camera in everyone's faces. So. Yeah, because Carissa's character is not a very likable character in the beginning, because everything she goes through is very complex, it's very layered. So it was very important to me that you could still walk with her. Even though you might not like her all the time, you wanted to walk next to her, so we need to be close to her, you know. Yeah. in order to get that kind of feeling. Well, it was great. Thanks for bringing it to London here at the Film Festival. Have fun in London. Thank you so much. I really love this conversation and you did your research and thank you. That's all right. But I watched it this morning, so, you know, I was <laughs> fresh, fresh from it. So thanks for bringing it to London. Best of luck with all the Academy Awards and all that stuff coming up. If you get there, it was brilliant. Exciting time. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. Thanks for joining us on, on Fred Movies. Thank <laughs> you, Fred Phil. <laughs>